Welcome to Halo Infinite Forge a scripting tutorial on how to spawn bots and how to deal with bots and how to make your map work with bots. So here I have a map. I've, I've been really good at designing it. It comes with a, a, a hidden vent for you to walk through as well as a few other platforms that the bots have to jump between and just proving that all these can be done by the player. So in theory, the bots can run around this arena area and play around like a normal player would. But there are some few caveats to that. So let's begin by looking how to spawn a bot in. First off, you're going to need a way to spawn a bot in. Now this can be a button or it can be used as a gameplay element such as a player has joined or a player has left. But in all cases, that be looked in the scripting brain. So I've chosen to use a button and I've labeled a button one and a button two because I want to spawn a button on team one and team two. So let me just show how to do a spawn a bot in for team two because I've already set it up for team one. So I'm going to go in and to go on to gameplay and spawn in a scripting brain and I can place it nearby. And then I'm going to open my script brain just to keep the script brain in focus. I then go out and I select the button. And I go back into the same scripting brain we were in. And I insert an object reference node to that button. So first off, we want to say when I interact with the button. So that'll be under custom events on object interacted and I just link those two together it says now when it interacted it's going to do something and that is we want to spawn a bot in so we select bot and we add a bot and we link the two diamonds together indicating that's the flow path that we want to exist and now the add bot node ask a few questions. What difficulty does it want the bot to be? And what team do you want to spawn the bot in on? Now, if you're playing a free for all, you don't need to assign a team because it's free for all. But if you are playing a team, then you need to know a few things such as let's say a player uh, exits a team, then you need to put the bot into that team. In this case, we know what team we're going to do. We're going to put them on team two. So we go into the no properties. And I'm going to say the team is going to be two. So that's team two. And then the bot difficulty has four sets. So you've got your uh, recruit, which is your easiest. Then it goes marine, ODSD, and then Spartan. Now, obviously, they don't label it like that. They label it in alphabetical order, just because that's an order they determine. So let's choose uh, the least difficulty. Let's go for Spartan. That is the top highest difficulty. It, it's basically the bot is acting as sort of your ranked supreme bot. And that's all you need to effectively do to spawn a bot in. Now, and we can prove that by coming out and going into a test mode or play mode. So I come up to here, this one, and I see the Godfather has joined. And there he's running around down there, having a good time and falling over. And just to prove that the other button's exactly the same. 
Now, one of the critical things, I'm on team one, and so the team one is on my team. And there you go, the two bots, they're gonna run around and basically have a little game and fun. You know, there you go, there's Vrawning, he's running over. Now, when you do that, or spawn a bot in and in play mode, your bot probably won't do anything. And you might be saying, why are my bots doing things? And that is, I have set up, I have set up this thing called NavMesh. This is the advanced AI guidance to the bots so they know how to run, jump, walk, and move around your train or your map. So if I come under, you can see there are all these blue areas. That's a place, the area, the bot doesn't need to know how to move to that area because it knows it can get to that area in the blue. The arrows indicate from where it can do things. So it can jump down. If I just move down, it can know that it can go from this blue area down and jump down onto this other blue area such as with this gap it knows it can make the gap and so it knows it can jump from one area to another now with this platform it knows it can jump between the two and then you notice that this arrow is in green and that's because unlike all the white arrows that's been predetermined by the engine this is a hint that i've placed to give to guide the nav mesh generator saying that that jump is possible to include it anyway now you might be saying how did i get this to work so here is the bot testing field and as you can see I've got no nav mesh on it, as in under the visualization, I've got nav mesh turned on and there's no nav mesh associated with this. So we begin by setting a nav mesh by spawning in on the main floor of our terrain, our map, our object. What is known under the gameplay options under nav mesh is what is known as a nav mesh seed point and we spawn it onto the ground of our main area so that's the seed of which the nav mesh will generate and essentially all it's generating is a, a box an area of which a bot can travel in of connected pieces so if you've got a nice map with flowing hills, if all the hills flow and you can run along them all, then it detects that it can run along all the contours and hills, and so it would be one nav mesh. Now, unfortunately, there is a problem here where there is a gap between this floor and this floor. So what we're gonna have to do, is I'll just butt that in just to make it closer, is spawn a second nav mesh seed and I'm going to place that on this so-called island and once again I'm going to have to put a nav mesh seed on this platform because it's not connected to the main nav mesh either and just to give an indicate now of what we've done is we go into the Y menu on the build menu and now you see nav mesh now there's an exclamation mark on the right hand side of it indicating that there is no nav mesh built for whatever as in there might have been changes to the map and so the nav mesh does not fit the build in which case we then make sure it's picked and selected and we build the selected and now we say the nav mesh has been downloaded. And now we can see 
that our nav mesh has fully built on all our platforms because we placed in the seed point. So it's placed in on this platform because it knows it can jump to it. Therefore, it knows to spawn that in. So we didn't have to place a nav uh, area here. Much like all the things up here, because this is connected by a jump point, it has spawned in this nav mesh area on top of our vent to go in. Now, next big problem with the box, they cannot detect or build a nav mesh inside an object. So as you can see here, this is our duct. If I just go into spawn and I run down here, you can see the nav mesh stops when I get inside and crawl inside because the bots do not understand crawling. That's simply something they cannot do. They can understand being on top of here because that's a nice area which they can pull. And if you change the height, it will follow. But they do not understand crawling inside this vent. And so, and the reason that is because the vent is itself an object. Now, because it's a hollow object, you can pass through it, but bots cannot detect through an object. They can only go on objects, almost like the outside perimeter as opposed to any internal volume. But with that limitation, you can understand bots will not go inside vents. But for gameplay elements, you say, oh, but players will because they'll see and they know they can go inside a vent. And so that's how it'd be no problem. So you can run up here and just go in the vent and the player knows, so it's no problem. But for a general basis, your bot that you will spawn in will not go into the vent. Now, next thing you see on this nav mesh is that I could jump from this platform onto this one. However, the bots cannot jump from this platform onto where I'm standing. And the bots say, I don't know how to do that because that's impossible, except the player managed to do so. So now we're thinking, if that's possible, then surely we can get the bots to do it because it's not like a a big jump that you have to do a run up to or anything like that. It's just a simple hop and a skip and you're over there. And that's why we have the other nav mesh objects. And these are essentially hints to tell your, the nav mesh generator to generate saying you can jump onto this object. So let's decide what we want to do. Now, this platform can be jumped to and from what on from the tall platform to the small one and so therefore you could probably do that between the main area and this little platform so that's a jump hint two way so that's spawning in a jump way two way now it's got arrows and arrows indicate which way it can jump because a jump is generally viewed as linear so obviously you have to rotate it and just move it into position like so now it's got a boundary around it and what you actually need to set is make sure that the boundary encompasses two nav mesh i won't say base plates but areas these are the blue areas so you basically need your boundary to encompass the blue areas so as you can see here the boundary isn't and that simply can be done by just a small rotate. Now I will rotate mine around a bit just to give an indication of which way. So let's see if the nav mesh understood what I want it to do. And the answer is no. So then we need to basically go in to the object properties and find the boundary and basically make it bigger wider however long so that 
it will eventually will compass the two nav meshes. So here it's going through, and here it's also now going through. So now, in theory, so we've managed to build the jump correctly, and that's, as you can see, in green. Now, I did not cheat, but I did have to spawn in a nav seed point for, to get that to work. So it's a bit finicky in trying to get the jump hints to register of what it can do. But now the bots know that they can jump from this platform and then onto this platform and back and forth. Be indicating by the double arrows. So any green arrows you see on any maps in the NavMef menu or visualization, they're always hints. Whereas the white ones are pre-generated ones. So there's other conditions you can do in your nav meshes. This is you can give uh, crouch terms. This is where a bot has to crouch through, but it has to crouch on an object, not on top of an object uh, or through an object, sorry. And then you've got movement in case it hasn't really worked out where you can move through an area or not. And then you've also got walk which is basically, instead of movement, which is sprinting, it has to walk and actually go slowly. Such as, let's say, you've got a jump that only works for sprinting as opposed to a jump that will just happen and work normally. So that's what you've got. Now, the next point item you will need to not necessarily spawn in, but an item that is important is what is known as a, a nav cutter. And a nav cutter essentially restricts or say, cuts out an area of which the inside the blue area. So there's a blue, the nav cutter, if placed on an area, so let's just place on down here. If now I regenerate this by building, the nav cutter has basically cut through the nav mesh and say a bot cannot walk through this area or doesn't know how to walk through the area because a bot can walk into it it just then doesn't know how to navigate in that area as opposed to cannot enter it but since we're a nice terrain map i'm just going to delete that and once because we deleted that i'm going to have to rebuild the nav mesh to essentially restore the nav mesh to what it was. So the last thing is that your bots will now run around this map. However, what if you want to give your bots somewhere to go? Well, that is what we call a nav bot marker. So we can spawn it on the platform and basically the bots in this area will navigate to the area. So let's say we spawn two nav markers. In theory, your bots will move towards them. But it won't go between nav markers because it doesn't know the next place to go once it's got to that nav marker. Now, now inside the object properties of that nav marker, under where it is located the label, you have what is known as navigation. And you have this first one, which is explore, which means it will go to it and then explore around the area. And it might say, oh, there's another nav marker. I'm going to go to that. Or it might reach the nav marker and say in the other one property, which is known as hide, which essentially these are places to hide and it's going to go to it and then find a place to hide behind. So if you set up a cover or a piece of cover, the bot will head to that nav marker and go into cover. If it then finds another nav marker inside that cover, it's going to exit that cover to go to that new nav marker. Nav markers act as waypoints for bots and they do not know what waypoints are near each other. 
And so we enter in the world of neighbors. Now, a neighbor is simply what is next to that nav marker. So let's go through and just quickly understand what we mean by this. So I'm just going to draw a square. And the first thing I'm just going to do is create some points. So this is our A, this will be C, B, and this will be C as our corners for our nav marker. Essentially, the nav marker A, its neighbor is B and C. So that's the two ones you put down. However, nav marker C, only neighbor is A. So you only put one neighbor down. And likewise for B. So when your box comes to A, it has a choice of going to B or to C. However, if your box walks to C, it can only walk to A because it cannot walk to B because it's not its nearest neighbor. And likewise for B, A is its only marker. So we essentially can write this as a list of sort of A can go to B and C, B can only go to A, I'll just write it, and C can only go to A. So let us quickly just set up, and this is the second nav marker. So I'm going to say its nearest nav point or neighbor is the first nav point. And then I go to this nav point, the first nav point, and say its nearest neighbor is, of course, the second nav marker we placed. So now when a bot walks or gets onto this area, and it finds A, or our first nav marker, it knows that the second nav marker exists and can go towards it, and vice versa. If it gets the second nav marker, it knows that the first nav marker is there. Now we're clever, because what we can do is we can set the team of these nav markers. So essentially, if you've got a one team, two teams, you're going to have one team where the bots patrol, as in go to these two nav markers, and only that team of players or bots will operate through those nav markers. So if a bot is on team, if we set this to team two, only team two bots will operate and go through these nav markers. Whereas if it's on team one, they will not discover these nav markers. So let's put the first one as neutral, but put the second one as team two. We should see that a team two bot goes between them, whereas a team one bot will only go to this point. So as we said, bot one, should go towards it. So bot one's gonna spawn down here in the green and he's gonna say and head towards it. He's gonna take a jump, realize that he meant to be jumping across and then fails and die. Now that's a problem with the map, but not a problem necessarily with the nav map. And he's gonna go there and now he's gonna turn around and head to that nav marker. And now he's gonna go back and forward because it's on a neutral team because that's the nearest nav point. So there we go, he's patrolling back and forth. The only thing that changes a bot's AI is when it meets a bot of an enemy team. So I'm gonna spawn in our first bot and then spawn in our second bot. And now they start to fight. And they will now go at each other 
till the end of time. But notice how the bot's AI of movement or navigating to a one air point stops. Because of course, the bots want to kill each other. And as a testing purposes for a game, you want to see the map movement and you want to see the move around. That's totally fine. But you cannot now say that the bots to go and will attempt to navigate your course. You need to basically have a button or have a way to not spawn in the enemy bot. Which is simply, you have two buttons. And there we go, what two bots? And see, they will now just rotate for back and forth between the two nav markers. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial all about bots and their spawning, and more importantly, talking about the nav mesh and how bots can interact and run around your maps, environments, and whatever. There are a few conditions that you need to apply, such as, you know, on player leave, spawn bot in, or on player exit, or those sorts of conditions in the brain, in the nodes. But that's something that is easily changed when you're in the multiplayer scenario. So that's it on how to spawn bots. As you can see, our bots are running back and forth between nav markers. Now, nav meshes aren't complicated, but they are very finicky. So don't be enamored if your nav mesh doesn't work first time. Just simply work on it, get the position right, and just keep reapplying it or retrying it to get nav mesh to work. Because of course, it's trying to work it out from your hints and your seed points. So do not be afraid if it doesn't work first time, just work on it. So if you liked this video on bot spawning, then please leave a like, a thumbs up. And if you would like to see anything else programmed or scripted inside Halo Infinite Forge, then please do leave us, then please do leave a comment down below in the comment section and I'll get back to you and I'll work out how to teach it so you can learn and create more fantastical maps and more importantly, programs and scripts of which you can now use inside those maps.